It's me, Mario! Ever since my USB project for the Nintendo 64, I've been wanting to make more connectable devices. While this idea is pretty simple, I wanted to do it. And it is, I want to make a, an adapter for the NES controller to plug into the N64. There's three reasons, well, kind of two, that I want to do this. First is so I can play the NES and even my Game Boy emulator using an NES controller. That seems more fitting. The other is so I can use a power glove with the N64. Having never used the power glove, I hear it's actually quite awful to use, so this might be a terrible idea, but it'll make the thumbnail look better. What's the plan for this project? Well, it's pretty straightforward. I take an extension cord for an NES controller, cut it in half, and then connect it to an Arduino. And then I take the other half, and using half of an extension cord for a Nintendo 64 controller, I use that to connect to the N64. And there you go, I can use the Arduino to translate between NES controller data and N64 controller data, and I have a NES controller for the N64. Pretty straightforward, we'll see how it goes. While this project is fairly simple, it does let, let me detail a very important part of engineering in general, which is take big problems and break them down into smaller pieces, solve those separately, and then combine those together into a complete solution. So I've already solved the problem of being able to communicate with the N64. The USB project can talk to the N64, so that, I just reused the code for that, we're good there. The other problem is, well, I now need the Arduino to be able to talk to an NES controller. So I first implement that, and once I have those two pieces solved separately, I can then combine them together to create the complete project. That way it's easier to understand how the whole thing fits together. And I mean, that's the basic plan, let's do it. Okay, that should be, that should be all the connections I need. I didn't solder this on yet. This is what will convert the 3.3 voltage from the N64 to the 5 volts that both the Arduino and the NES controller need. I'm not going to put it on yet because I'm going to be working on this while it's plugged in and that'll be the voltage source. So I just got the NES controller talking to the Arduino. It was not very hard at all. There is a website that I found that had pretty much everything you needed to know on how to communicate with an Arduino or an Arduino with an NES controller along with example code on how to do it. So I just took that, I changed the pins to the pins I needed. I did make one other change, I'll just show that in a second. First you need to configure your pins. So there's three of them for the NES controller. You have an input pin that actually reads data back from the controller and then two output pins used to control the controller. One of them is called the latch, the other one's called the clock. So this is the place where I made the change. They had an unrolled loop. I just rolled it up into a loop to simplify the code a little bit. The way it works is pretty simple. You first send a pulse out on the latch line. So you set that voltage to high and then back to low. And then that triggers in the controller for it to read all of the buttons as they currently stand and to get saved in the memory in the controller. And then you read it one bit at a time. First start by reading the bit, and the first bit that comes out is the A button, I believe. The other output pin, the clock, you set that high and then low, and then that shifts the output to be the next bit in line. And then the most recent bit is discarded. And yeah, then you can read the next button. And then you do that eight times. That's what this for loop does, it does it eight times. You read every button that way, just one at a time. And that's it. That's how you read NES controllers. And the nice thing is this timing doesn't really need to be precise. So long as you have these pulses, it works. So that way, if this routine ever gets interrupted by the N64, when the N64 requests information, it can pause what it's doing here, service the N64, and then come back, and it nothing's no, no problem. So nice and simple, and it's going to work great. So when I push buttons, it registers that I've pushed them. So, that's exciting. Doomsday activated. That's working, now I just need to integrate it in with the rest of the project.
So the adapter is complete. It's been coated up, put in a case, and none of the issues have been fixed. There were two issues I had to fix. First, Mario 64 sends a reset command instead of an initialize command when you first turn the game on. And my adapter was not responding to that command correctly. That's been fixed. And the other was the boost converter that converted the 3.3 volts to 5 volts it was noisy. It didn't, it wasn't a nice smooth voltage, but I just added a capacitor and it smoothed it right out. With those two fixed, I am now ready to test this out. And so I've ordered a power glove. And when that arrives, we're gonna put this through its paces. All right, so let's uh, test this thing out. First, I just tried it with the regular controller with Mario 64, and it plays surprisingly well. You know, A and B are the primary buttons you need. There is Z if you push select, so you can do long jumps, but it's a little bit awkward. But overall, Mario 64 is pretty playable on NES controller. Moving on, Super Smash Brothers, same thing. Most of the buttons you need are just the bu buttons the NES controller has. It actually plays pretty well for not having a lot of buttons. But the real reason why you'd want this is so you can play NES games, because the EverDrive, you can load up an NES emulator and play NES games on your N64. And it plays like you'd expect. It's actually, I think, a better experience than trying to use the N64 controller. And the same applies to the Game Boy emulator that I made. You can play Game Boy games, and the gamepad much better matches the experience of playing a Game Boy. Then I tried the Power Glove. And I gotta say, I probably had the experience that a lot of kids had when they got their Power Glove Christmas morning. It was, it looks cool, it's all flashy, and you plug it in and it barely works. Now I can't even seem to get mine to go up. There might be a hardware defect right now, it's quite old, it's as old as me. But I was able to get Program 5 working, kind of, where you, rather than pointing up and down, you just move front to back for your up and down motion, and yeah, I was, it kind of worked. Although, because I wasn't able to go up, I managed to play Mario Kart, and it's kind of playable. The, the, the glove does not want to stay in the center, so you try to hold center as much as you can. Like, you're like, please, I just want to go straight, and the game's trying to go to one of the two sides, and it just, yeah, doesn't work well. So next I tried out Mario Paint, and that went as bad as well as you'd expect it to. I could barely choose what tool or color I wanted, let alone draw anything. The glove also employs a turbo mode, where holding a finger to push a button actually repeatedly pushes that same button. There are some other modes I could have tried that would have fixed this, but I don't think it would have really helped much in the grand scheme of things. This is supposed to be a drawing of Mario, by the way. Beautiful. Lastly, I tried Goldeneye. The game has the ability to use two controllers, which would make the game, in theory, capable of being played using the power glove. In practice, well, you can see for yourself. It was impossible to aim properly. I think the only reason why I was able to kill any enemies was due to the game's generous auto-aim. I did want to see what it would feel like to play a first-person shooter where squeezing your finger would shoot the gun. And that aspect, that actually works. So yeah, power glove. Kinda a crappy <laughs> accessory. I get the hate, but it still looks cool. <laughs> So that's the NES adapter for N64. I actually made an extra one. So a week after the video comes out, I'm going to select somebody on my Patreon to receive this. I'll just send it to him in the mail and so you can play with an NES controller on the N64. Although, I wouldn't recommend the Power Glove. So I had a lot of fun making this adapter. I want to keep creating interesting devices that can be plugged in the Nintendo 64. And so I want to hear your ideas down in the comments. What sort of things do you want to see plugged into Nintendo 64 to extend its capabilities or control it in interesting ways? And just as a sneak peek, some project that I've been tinkering with a little bit, I want to make this work with the Nintendo 64. So subscribe if you want to see that happen. And until next time, take care.